Welcome back, poster fans. I am the poster pack rat. Please click those like buttons now and subscribe. Doing that helps new viewers discover the joys of poster collecting. This channel's focus is on retail and arcade posters. The posters I feature are genuine posters, not reproductions or reprints. My long-standing advice is buy originals. Authentic posters will always look superior and appreciate in value. Sometimes collecting posters is as much about the art as it is the investment. Fellow collectors, it's an honor to show you guys another rare treasure. So rare, in fact, there's no other living specimen on Google. Hopefully this YouTube helps other collectors and Virtual Fighter fans discover this vintage poster. Let's briefly talk about the superb blessing that is Sega's Virtual Fighter. Virtual Fighter is the world's first fully realized 3D fighting game, released in arcades in 1993. The game followed Sega's Virtual Racing, released the previous year in 1992. Also hugely successful and influential. Few developers have the skills to produce quality games across genres, but Yu Suzuki's AM2 was one such developer. Initially, AM2 had plans to produce a sports game as their follow-up to virtual racing. My guess is it would have been a soccer or football-inspired game. However, Sega's Model 1 arcade hardware wasn't powerful enough to render two complete sports teams, so a lone AM2 programmer began prototyping a one-on-one -on -one fighting game, and they used the pit crew from Virtual Racing as its first character models. When you look at early concept art for Virtual Fighter, keep in mind these characters originated from Virtual Racing. They are inextricably linked. I will post images and comparisons when promoting this video on Twitter. Be sure to check my Twitter timeline for that. Virtual Fighter would be the first time many of us saw 3D renderings of anatomically correct human forms in video games. All the Virtual Fighter characters have jointed hands with individual fingers, and some without shoes have noticeable toes. All have unique hairstyles and clothing that include hats, bandanas, and belts. Some elements like their hair and clothes have animations that correspond with the player's movements. For at least two decades following Virtual Fighter, the 3D realism observed in fighting games became the metric for how we judge the latest generation of video game consoles. During the retail launch of Saturn and PlayStation, it was Virtual Fighter that did battle against Toshinden. For the subsequent generation, it was Virtual Fighter 3, assisted by Soul Calibur, that fought against Take and Tag Tournament. Only in recent years, with the advent of open world games, has that metric shifted. Elite programmers are now obsessed over realistic environments instead of fabrics and flesh tones. This poster is a B1 size Japanese arcade poster. It includes English text, so it probably doubled for other markets. Here's my sizing graphic for B1 posters. B1 posters are near equivalent in size to the American movie poster. As you can see from this video, I've had this specimen linen backed and framed behind Plexi. And here's my CD graphic, scaled to size. This poster had two serious flaws when I acquired it. There was noticeable sun or attic type heat damage that caused the paper to yellow. And it had another much nastier flaw. Prepare yourselves, guys. Cage the ninja, center right, was missing his crotch. There was a surface tear right over his ball sack. 
Those crotch bandits. Someone removed his nuts and it wasn't a squirrel. Most likely, this was caused by adhesive left on the back of this poster before rolling it up. It could have been double-sided tape or some other tacky substance, so I hired a restoration service to linen back this poster, de-yellow it, and restore Cage's manhood. I now consider this poster in fair condition, considering all the work that's gone into it. Once those difficult tasks were complete, it became wall-worthy by a mile. Because of its rarity, I must withhold some details, such as its paper stock weight and finish. Now let's talk poster. I love this layout. It's so skillfully executed. It makes me think Sega hired a professional photographer to consult on it. Having Jeffrey and Pi sitting in the foreground was brilliant. By doing that, we're given extra visual detail on their articulation. And that gorgeous gold foil background reminds me of a crashing ocean wave. Maybe it represents the tidal wave of profits sure to come to Sega. Newer, more modern players might be shocked by these primitive graphics, but I find the look charming. And I'm probably not the only one, considering the recent Figma action figures and those low-poly skins making an appearance in Virtual Fighter V Ultimate Showdown. This stylized but minimalist look is now iconic. It was able to convey gender, ethnicity, and personality. Those bright colors and sharp angles were a benefit to this game's design. It allowed our brains to focus almost exclusively on its fast gameplay. Akita is something of a Street Fighter II Ryu clone, but he also served as a visual bridge for connecting mature Street Fighter II players with this new game in 1993. And I can't think of a better character front and center. That said, I've always thought Jackie and Sarah were the most interesting characters of the series. Their backstory, being brother and sister, and both entering this martial arts tournament as adversaries has always fascinated me. They're the two blondes depicted here, wearing similar costumes and colors, but they were placed on opposite sides of this poster. Perhaps Sega was saving their fight for the main event. I know I haven't gushed enough over the minimalist graphics depicted here, but I really like being able to see every angle, triangle, and square in Akita's shoulder. His legs and feet, and Jeffrey's feet as well. It's all so precise, and it reminds me of early CG animation and computer art. This was the dawn of a new era, and Sega was at its forefront with Model 1 hardware architecture. I also like that we can see some mistakes, like those extruding polygons in Pi's hand at the bottom right, and on the hands of the other characters. That gives us a hint as to how these models were programmed and animated. I also like the bold placement of the Virtual Fighter logo, center top, and its similarities with the AM2 logo are undeniable, both with red and blue colors and with a similar font. This image was so good, Sega used it for the Japanese arcade flyer and in promotional materials for magazines, like the subscriber-exclusive poster and Electronic Gaming Monthly, issue 59, and that was published in June of 1994. Cool posters and magazines sure were a lot of fun. At the bottom of this magnificent display of software engineering, Sega treats us to some English marketing. Realistic 3D fighting action and king of the world with double exclamation points. 
Those were some bold words, but they still ring true. Virtual Fighter was a kingmaker for Sega at arcades, and we were now living in Sega's kingdom. Well, my friends, we have reached that point in this video where we must say goodbye to this poster for now. But cheer up, we have more posters to share in the coming months. I recently read in an interview with Yu Suzuki that Virtual Fighter was once compared to watching animated cardboard boxes. Reading something like that was like receiving a punch to the gut. Not only did that ignorant anus insult the father of Virtual Fighter, but they also insulted the entire history of video gaming and for those of us who have lived it. To deny the roots and milestones of significant progress, such as those seen in Virtual Fighter, is peak arrogance and ignorance. Virtual Fighter showed us moving fingers on hands that would later inspire Sony executives to optimize PlayStation's hardware for 3D. And when those games on PlayStation appeared, the console simply wasn't powerful enough to put the fingers back on the hands. For almost half a decade, the hands in video games were simple cubes painted to look like a fist. Virtual Fighter not only did this better, but they did it first in 1993. If you've made it to the end of this video, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please click those like and subscribe buttons before you leave. Doing that encourages me to keep making new videos. For my next video, we'll be sticking with Sega, flying high in the sky atop an armored dragoon. I hope to see you there. In the meantime, don't ring out. Bye, guys.